As we embrace the new normal of a lot of people working from home and needing to access presentations, PowerPoint takes on a new form and needs a lot of modern skills to enable us to make the best use of it. This video is made for the Microsoft Virtual Hub and my name is David and I'm, I'm an MVP. So let's go through my top 12 tips and then let's look at what's coming soon. Number one. When participants are online, it's more important than ever to do an agenda that you can refer to partway through the presentation. And that's why I love this summary Zoom feature. So the way it works is that you have just a regular slide, but with these objects. And if you want to jump straight to section one, you can click on that, and then it goes straight like that. But equally, you can jump straight to section three, auto plays a GIF video like that, or section five, or absolutely in any order that you want. So how do we do that? So here I am in a presentation with some slides. Um, what you do is the header of every section, it's good to have it sort of like this. So something with a distinct style. So this is number one, this is number two, et cetera, et cetera. And then you click just before your first section, go to insert, zoom, and summary zoom. Then you just click to select every single slide that is there. I find this works better with six. It lays six out really well. I'll do a seventh one and show you what can go wrong. Yeah, so there you go. Seven doesn't look great, whereas you can click on this and delete it. The other thing that you can see is if it's not consistently done like that, it doesn't look that good. Delete that and six looks really good. This is, of course, a regular slide so you can do absolutely anything you want you can add icons or images or shapes or move things around and then if you go to slideshow mode shift f5 you get that effectively working you can click on there run through the slides and then when you're done it could, takes you back here uh, it's great to go directly to the finish line for example and what summary zoom does is it allows you to go from a traditional slideshow, which is slide one, then two, then three, then four, to something that is non-linear. You can go from one to two or to three or to four. Do you see that was using the more feature that I absolutely love? Really good for assessing the strategy if you're running out of time or a table of contents as well, like I've shown you here. Number two. So if you go to slideshow mode, recently released feature, click on always use subtitles. Then you can choose the spoken language, which is currently one of 17 languages. And then the subtitle language, this is over 60 that you can choose from. So here, for example, I can say that I want to speak in French and get the output in English. And then you can choose where you want to see it. I'm just going to press uh, start slideshow. Bienvenue à cette présentation. On peut voir que ça va montrer mes sous-titres dans la langue que tu peux comprendre. All right, it's not perfect, but it's doing an okay job. You can also click here and toggle the subtitles on or off by clicking that as well. Number three. So from PowerPoint Online, you can go to the slideshow mode tab and you have present live. You can choose if this is only people in your organization, which is the default, or anyone. I'm gonna choose anyone. Then click present live, and it goes full screen, and this happens. So you have a link that you can copy, or you have a QR code that people can scan. So here we are, where people have joined the session, and I go to show slides as the presenter, and it has me go through my slides as normal. I just have these extra options where I can get the link again, see how many people have joined, go to the welcome screen. The other stuff is pretty much the same. So this is the person following along. As you can see, they have the transcript and it is transcribing it as I speak. And even if I speak really, really fast, it does a pretty good job at picking up what I'm saying. It does put the full stop in the wrong place, but that's not bad if you really think about all the effort that it's taking to do this. So the other cool thing is you can actually change the language. So if I wanna speak this in French, I want to read it in French, I can change it as I need to, and it translates it live. And if you speak French like I do, you know that this is doing a pretty good job. It's not fantastically perfect, but it's pretty good job considering how fast I'm speaking. 
You can also change it to any one of these languages. You can also uh, go to full screen mode or exit full screen mode. You can remove this if you don't want to. You can give reactions. So I can give these sort of reactions in the slides and the viewer can actually progress the slides backwards or forwards. They can't go further in time, but they can go forwards and click current slide when they're done. From a mobile, you get a similar perspective. It is just in a different sort of screen, but all the same functionalities are different. And then you can, finally, you can give feedback by rating this presentation in different ways, and the presenter will get an email with comments and with all of these things. Back to the presenter's perspective. So this is how it looks. They can advance the slides, but they do also move and people, when they react, they see them coming out like that. And if you end it, you can also end it this way. And then from the viewer's perspective, this is how it looks when it ends. And finally, this is the kind of email that you get when people give you feedback on it. So your presentation score, um, let's dig into the details. So all the other questions they ask, the top slides, how many reactions there were per slide and what to improve on. And it has slide design ideas and speaker skills here. Any comments that you get as well. You also have a link to the Microsoft Forms that is done through it. And all of those responses over here as well. Number four. Quintessential to presenting online is being able to share your screen. From a Teams meeting, you click on this, this is share content, or there's the shortcut. And you can share one of four different things. Whiteboard I won't cover in this video. There's a lot of great tutorials about that. But if you want to, you can share a PowerPoint file directly. This will open up PowerPoint directly, and here you can navigate through the slides without leaving Teams. Now, although this is nice, it is sometimes slow to load. Uh, and also it doesn't give you the full flexibility and things like animations and transitions don't work that well. Neither do other of PowerPoint's features. What is interesting though, is that the participants themselves can move backwards and forwards through the slides as well, unless you click this and then they are not able to do that. So that is unique to presenting this way. I'm going to stop presenting or I'm just gonna click on share content here and I'll show you another one. So window means that you can just share directly that presentation. So then Shift F5 will take you to slideshow mode and now this is showing you here. You get your little window here on the left where you would have your video if you're showing it like this or otherwise you can minimize it as well to not see it. That's usually what I would do. And your participants would see the slides like that. When you are presenting, you do get this sort of red outline around. This tells you that you are sharing your screen. Uh, in case you forget, you can give control to other people in the meeting, or you can include or exclude system audio. Useful if you're sharing video or audio devices, then click include and stop presenting. This is a way to do it. You can pin this so that it's always there. I tend to keep it unpinned. And then if you want to get it back, you just point to the top. Back in Teams, if you have this X, that means that you're actually still sharing. So the third way that you can present, and probably the one I use the most, is click here and choose to share your desktop. Again, you have here, include computer sound, yes or no. So share your screen. This will share absolutely everything that you see. So kind of like what I'm doing in this video, if I go to another application, it will still share that. Like this, we'll still share it in this mode. Number five. A useful way that you can present in PowerPoint is something called presenter view. It has things like a timer, it has the next slide, notes of the slide and some other commands you can do on there as well. And you can progress slides like normal and then it would give you the next notes, the next slide, etc. So in order to get this to work in Teams, there is a hack to do that. From Teams, you share the PowerPoint window. So I'm gonna do this one. And then there's two ways to do it. So either I can force presenter view with a shortcut only, which is Alt F5, and that will show it like this. And just to prove it, the viewer will only see the slideshow mode. They won't see the stuff around it. The other way to do it is to go to slideshow mode as usual, 
and then right click from slideshow mode and choose show presenter view. Then again, the viewer will only see the slideshow, they won't see the presenter view. Number six. From Teams, if you click on the participants list, then you can do another useful thing. You can click Spotlight Me, and that will make sure that your video is highlighted for everyone else in the meeting. So when you are presenting, it will show your face with the slides. There are some new features around that coming soon as well. Uh, and finally, if you are not the meeting host, then maybe you don't have the ability to present, uh, in which case then you can click here and choose manage permissions and the person who is organizing the meeting can decide whether or not you present. But the default is that everyone is able to present at this present moment. Uh, you can do the same thing whether you're presenting from a mobile phone, where you're presenting from a online. Number seven. In a Teams meeting, something that I like to do is to add a corporate background so that your viewers can sort of see you and your email address. Here I have my YouTube, some visual representation of what I do in my company, my logo, etc. So the way to do this is from a Teams meeting, you click these three dots and then you choose apply background effects. Then you can either choose a blur one, for example, and that will just sort of put that around there or one of these virtual ones built in, but you can also just add your own. I tend to like dark themed ones because they will look better by de-emphasizing you and so that you are brighter compared to the background. Uh, also note that it will show up the wrong way around when you see it, but for your viewers, it will show up the right way around. I tend to author these in PowerPoint, but you can use other applications as well. Number eight. If PowerPoint is saved on your OneDrive or SharePoint with auto save on, you can also have multiple people editing the file at the same time. They can be on PowerPoint desktop. In this case, I'm using Teams and this one's using PowerPoint online. But as long as you tick this box that says keep slides updated, then even if you're in slideshow mode, those updates can come through. So if I go to Teams and let's say from Teams, I will just insert a shape like this, I can resize it, I can edit it like that. Then I go back to slideshow mode and over here it has updated, there's the shape and there's the output. So it could be used a little bit like a whiteboard um, as people are editing it live during your presentation. All you need to make sure that you do is you share it in Teams and the people who you're sharing it with have the rights to do it. Number nine. If the Teams meeting is done from within your organization, you can click on the three dots here and you can choose to start recording. Every meeting creates a meeting chat file that you can access after the meeting in the chat bar here. And once the meeting is available, you can see it here and you can click on it and you can either play it directly from here or you can click on these three dots and say open in Microsoft Stream. Now, if you don't have permission for recording it, maybe you're outside the organization or you're not one of the meeting hosts and the permissions are set up that way, you can still record a meeting using a third party app, which in this case is PowerPoint. So if you click on the insert tab, you can choose screen recording and then it will open up another window and just select the area and select it all. I would just do full screen like that. And then you can press record gives you the countdown and now it's recording. Uh, you can go to any other application just like screen sharing and it will still record that. When you're done, you can pause it or you can stop it. Choose whether you want audio and the pointer or not. And then if you go back to PowerPoint, it has the video and now it's recording. So if you want to export it, you can right click it and choose save media as and then you can export it and save it as an mp4 file number 10 something that i find really useful when you are sharing a screen is the ability to zoom in and out like this to do that you just use the keyboard shortcut windows key and the plus button windows key and minus will zoom out what that actually does is it opens up a program called magnifier 
Uh, and you can do it manually like this without the shortcuts, but I think the shortcuts are just great. There are other views as well, um, but I tend to get into those by accident. Just go to full screen and that is the best experience and then minimize that to zoom in and out. Works on any application, including PowerPoint slides. Number 11. Sometimes remote participants want to be able to tune in and out and do some other stuff on the side during presentations. So if you are going to share something that is going to be done without narrations, then I love using Sway. And the person viewing it can just scroll down. You can see it's animated. They can see before after shot with pictures. What I tend to do is start with a document and then just upload it. And then it sort of makes it into a Sway like you would make a Word document into a PDF. It's still good to do some manipulations and editing to make it more visual and to make it stand out, but effectively, that is mostly how you do it. You can share it then quite easily from clicking here. Look how it's already kind of animated and got certain effects like that. Number 12. Rehearsing a presentation is also a pretty big part of preparing things. If you navigate to PowerPoint Online, and by the way, Forms and PowerPoint Online are both available even if you don't have an Office 365 subscription, they're available with a free version of it. So from here, you can go to Slideshow and choose to rehearse with Coach. This uses artificial intelligence to give you live feedback on what you're doing. So press Start Rehearsing. And as you speak, it will tell you different things. So if I say, what do you guys think about that? It will pick up that that might be offensive. And if I use... Um, like, I don't know, like this is how you do it. It doesn't appreciate you using those words. So it goes through your slides and it allows you to say multiple different things. It also pulls out different elements of it. And when you're finished, you press escape. And then it gives you this as a reply, which tells you whether you're monotone or not, how fast you, you speak over time, whether you read the slides, any sensitive phrases, filler words, etc. So this is a really good way to use artificial intelligence to get that to happen. And just as I'm making this video, if I go to Slideshow in PowerPoint Desktop for Windows, I have Rehearse with Coach as well. So it just got released here, currently in pre-release for Office Insiders only. There's so much functionality already, but there's a lot coming soon as well. For example, PowerPoint Live Presentations is coming to Teams around December 2020. And there's another thing called Dynamic View in October, so very soon, automatically optimizes shared content and video participants in Teams meetings. Now you can personalize the view to suit your preferences and needs, like showing specific participants and content side by side. So that's pretty good. And there's also custom layouts, which is going to take that concept even further of dynamic layouts, and that's due in December. You'll also be able to, for example, have someone's face showing up with a background removed right with a presentation slides behind. We also have external access in whiteboards, which is pretty good because that's really been lacking. And Teams meeting recordings are going to be saved on OneDrive and SharePoint. So now you'll be able to share it with external users, just like you can any OneDrive SharePoint file. Virtual breakout rooms are coming soon. So you'll be able to split participants into sub meetings. And finally, there'll be a meeting recap. So this will be a recording, a transcript, shared files and chat that will automatically be shared with every participant in the meeting. So that's some really cool, exciting stuff coming soon. So if you like this video, then I have plenty more kind of videos on Teams, PowerPoint, Excel, Power BI, etc. So please feel free to check out some other stuff that I have on my channel. Thanks for watching.